Throughout the history of the NBA, brilliant young stars have burst onto the scene and made their own indelible mark on the game. I think in the long run, I'll be able to handle myself man to man with almost anyone in the league. And with each passing decade, the next generation of players has carried on that legacy, raising the NBA to even greater heights. They call him Mr. Jordan in Chicago. That's the tough part about taking on something from someone else. You have to maintain that same love of enjoyment or, or integrity or what the fans saw 10 years ago and still can see it now, but with a little bit more flash to it. Now a new group of stars takes the league into a new millennium. To the rim for the chance. Oh. He does! Oh, the morning! Ubliana. Behind the back to Jordan! Oh! Iverson. Oh. I don't believe it! Stephon Marbury, spectacular play. The kid has come up big! Oh, did you see the move by the kid? That's Kobe. And as the NBA looks to the year 2000, the future is now. From the moment he set foot on an NBA court, Anthony Penny Hardaway seemed to possess an unlimited array of skills, and he would showcase this talent with a style all his own. So they go to Hardaway. One bat. Oh, what a great bat. Oh, okay. To Royo for the layup right side. Yeah. Oh, Penny Hardaway behind his back. Three point bomb. Go! Now the Magic have a break. Here's Hardaway. Still oh, in the home on Newey. This is Penny on the run. Owens gets back. Oh, oh what a shot. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. That's the kind of play the superstar is supposed to make. With his rare combination of size and versatility, Penny would instantly evoke comparisons to some of the greatest big guards in NBA history. Penny is like magic. He has uh, point guard skills, center skills, post-up skills. He's an exceptional player. Once a big guard gets into the lane, you know, you can't do anything. Penny drives baseline, spin the rack! Nobody could do anything with Oscar. I had the same way, and now Anthony is doing the same thing. And he jumps higher than both of us, probably put together. <laughs> During the 1980s, Magic had teamed with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to lead the Lakers to five NBA championships. A decade later, in 1993, Penny joined center Shaquille O'Neal in Orlando, where they would combine to form a new and devastating one-two punch. Do you think he has eyes in the back of his head? In only their second season together, these two young stars upset the mighty Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Hardaway, oh, beautiful dish! And they seem poised to capture the first of many championships. The Orlando Magic is universally regarded as the NBA's team of the future. The question is, can the Rockets make them wait a little longer? In the 1995 finals, Orlando would be swept by the defending champion Houston Rockets. But for Penny and the Magic, the future still appeared bright. Well, we just looked at the Rockets celebrating and just tried to soak in as much as possible and try to say that use this as a motivating factor to get back next year. But their rapid rise to the finals was followed by a sudden reversal of fortune, one that would test Hardaway's resolve. The following season in the Eastern Conference Finals, the Bulls would earn their revenge, embarrassing the Magic in a four-game sweep. And in the aftermath of that defeat, the cornerstone of the franchise, superstar Shaquille O'Neal, departed Orlando to sign as a free agent with the Lakers. I think they really suffered to the fact that they lost Shaquille. When you, when you lose a centerpiece like that, I, I don't think it's easy to recover from. 1997 was another year of turmoil and frustration for Penny and the Magic, as they struggled throughout the regular season just to remain over 500. In the playoffs, opening round against Miami, injuries had left them badly overmatched. And after being blown out in the first two games, they faced the prospect of yet another humiliating sweep. 
but Hardaway would take matters into his own hands. Assuming control of the depleted magic, he single-handedly lifted them to two improbable victories. Hardaway on the drive, pulls up, launches a three-point shot, got it! Oh, man! He's got it all going on tonight, folks! And he proved that he could get, you know, 40 uh, in successive games against a very, very good defensive club. Kenny Hardaway, he took this team and put it on his shoulders and said, let's ride. You know, that kind of woke people up even more. Yes, sir. It is pretty time in Orlando. And though Orlando would eventually lose the series in five games, Penny had exhibited all of the qualities that define an NBA star and a true leader. I certainly feel that Penny Hardaway is going to be one of the players to carry uh, us into the next century. He is one of our young stars, one of our young mavericks for the future. Just like a Magic Johnson or a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, all those guys. I mean, even though they were great players, they were known for winning. And that's what I want to be known for. Penny Hardaway's remarkable versatility has become the hallmark of many of the young players flourishing around the league and they continue to stretch the game's creative boundaries in ways that could never have been imagined. And no player symbolized the new wave more than Kevin Garnett. He came to the Minnesota Timberwolves with unbridled exuberance and a maturity beyond his years. A high school phenom in Chicago, he was trying to make a rare leap straight into the NBA. Ready or not, why do you think you are ready for the big transition, the step from high school to the NBA? One reason I think I'm ready is because I work so hard. You know, Kevin jumps from high school to the pros. He has, as so many people say he can't make it, he's going to fail. And he told me, he said, I'm not going to fail because I don't want everybody to be right. I'm going to do it to prove them wrong. Though he was gifted enough to have been drafted fifth overall by Minnesota, few would have been surprised if Garnett had stumbled as he made his closely watched entry into the league. But he quickly showed the Timberwolves that he was the exception to most rules. He came into this as a high school player and basically saying that he was going to, you know, kind of a three-year development that will take you into three-year development. You know? and you're dribbling it, now you just spin out. And after 20 games in, I made a decision along with Mikhail that we were going to give Garnett as much responsibility as he was able to accept. Here I come, where uh, Here I come. It could be a historic night because Kevin Garnett, all 19 years, seven months of him, is going to get his first NBA start tonight. True to his word, Kevin continued to make a smooth transition from schoolboy wonder to professional star, combining his many assets into one awesome package. Size, strength, youth, quickness. Boy, the big man, he is really a two-guard trapped in a center's body. Oh, oh, did you see the youngster? You may be seeing the birth of a superstar tonight. Me, myself, I don't really listen to a lot of hoopla. Get the chair! No, I'm Kevin. Um, I know what I can do once I get confident, once I get confident. In his second season, Garnett had blossomed faster than anyone expected. He had proven he belonged at the game's highest level. And at age 20, he was already skyrocketing into the NBA's elite. Looking inside Robinson. Oh, Garnett! Where did he come from? Oh, my goodness. This is my boy, Kevin Garnett. Oh, this right here, y'all. The youngest, the youngest oh, here all go. superstar in the league here right now. It's the youngest man since Magic Johnson to make an all-star team. Kevin Garnett. He's 20 out. and he's going on 21. You are Kevin B. I'm 6'12". Woo! Garnett gets it back inside the arc. And there's Kevin Garnett. Hey, that's me. Woo! Like I'm in the highlight. It wasn't only his all-star status, but also his unique personality that made Kevin the centerpiece of the Timberwolves. Ever wonder what a go-to guy does? Good question. You better learn when you go against Minnesota, KG's on the floor. Okay, he's fun. He's, he's just simply fun to watch. There's a lot of players that have a lot of talent. You know, he has a certain individual of both character and he has charisma. And those are the things that, as a coach, that bring out the best not only in him, but also in the other players that he's playing with. Hey, let's run, run, let's get the ball coming. 
and Kevin Garnett working. Oh, and that's the screen. And he got the ball from Drew and tries to reverse. And it goes in. Sometimes we treat him like he's a 10-year vet. And sometimes I almost have to stop myself and say, geez, Kevin, you're giving him way too much responsibility. Uh, hold back. But yet, he is such a mature kid. Everything you give him, he wants more. Proving worthy of the faith placed in him, Garnett became the team leader as Minnesota ended seven years of futility and made its first trip to the playoffs. With me, you know, I'm still learning. It's sort of tough on how to carry yourself or how to how to lead a team, you know. You know, here I'm a fan of the game, and I'm being put in a position that, you know, I have to lead some guys that I look up to. Hey, yo, man, put some smiles on your face, man. I got Enjoy the game, baby. Let's go. Tonight, the T-Wolves take on the Rockets for the first playoff game before in the home crowd for this franchise. Every day I try to realize that uh, I'm in a great position. Just being out there, being in the NBA jersey, it's like just a pleasure for me. you believe how this kid's playing tonight? It is sensational. I think I'm a pretty good person, and um, on the basketball court, you know, I'm going to give him my all. I'm just trying to get better and better myself in the future and playing harder and harder, you know, that's all I can ask for. Like Garnett, Jason Kidd was considered the catalyst for the revival of a struggling franchise, the Dallas Mavericks. Jason Kidd on the push. Off to Jones. What a feat. Here comes Jason Kidd out with a bouncer to Harris. Jason, show us what you're about. You have to love to, to pass. For me, I, I enjoy my teammates uh, scoring a basket. Jason Kidd. Oh, what a pass. I always feel a part of myself uh, scoring that basket. Jason Kidd, some pass ahead to Mashburn. What a feat. Bringing his high-energy style to Dallas, Kidd made an immediate impact. He would transform the Mavericks into playoff contenders and electrify fans throughout the league. Oh, he got it to go! What a play by Jason Kidd! Kidd, off the drive. Whoa, Jason! Yeah. Oh, he's so much fun to watch. We just have fun. We almost made it into the playoffs. And everything was just going so well, and, and then to find out that I... Uh, won the Rookie of the Year with Grant Hill was just icing on the cake. It's been a fun year, it's been a wild year, and it's been a, it's been a good year in that sense. Oh yeah, and, it's, and a lot more to come. Oh yeah, definitely. But the glow of his rookie success quickly faded, as Kidd's second season would fall short of his lofty expectations. Mavericks looking for someone to light a fire. Kidd, another three and another miss. Kidd spins away from Pack, misses the dunk shot. Kid is steal on a pass intended for McLean ahead to Jackson. And that is kind of how the season has gone for the Mavericks. Things weren't going well at that time. Um, you know, the franchise wasn't going in the right direction. And so I felt that I needed a, a new direction. Early in his third season, Kidd was traded to Phoenix, but in his very first game with the Suns, his promising new beginning would suddenly be derailed. Everything was going well, and then I threw the ball to Rex in the corner, and he took the last shot of the uh, first half, and I went up to try to tip it in. Uh, I felt a pop in my collarbone, and I knew something had happened. I said, wow, another roadblock. First Dallas, and then now I get an injury. For weeks, he would be forced to watch in frustration while he anxiously awaited his chance to begin helping the Suns. The main thing was patience, because I, I wanted to come back as soon as possible. I wanted to show the people of Phoenix that Phoenix did the right thing in trading for me. So the crowd sum up applauding as the long-awaited return of Kidd has missed 22 games of that fractured white collarbone. And so the Suns up by one, 26, 25 years, Kidd on the steal, and he's going to get back to that basket. Jason Kidd. Playing with Jason is, is just energy. As soon as he stepped on the floor, it's just an explosion. Jason Kidd right now is unstoppable with his passes. With Jason out there, when you're open for that split second, he'll find you. Kidd backing in. Beautiful pass to KJ. That's a highlight. He's a special basketball player. People like him don't come around but every you know, 10, 15, 20 years if you're lucky. 
And just as he had done in Dallas, Jason revitalized his new team. The Phoenix Suns have won their 10th in a row, and they're headed to the playoffs. Who would have dreamt after an 0-13 start they'd be in the playoffs? But when you go to that small lineup... Orchestrating the Suns' attack, he had reestablished himself as one of the league's premier point guards, while also carrying on the legacy of his predecessors. An effort by Jason Kidd. When you're growing up, you have this dream to um, fulfill the shoes of a Magic Johnson or John Stockton. It's just a dream come true. But while Kidd is the prototype of the modern point guard, the position did not even exist in the early days of the league. The shortest man on the court was the one who would handle the ball and distribute it to his teammates. But as the game evolved, so did the guards' role. And with each new era came a player who broke the mold and redefined the position. And now, two young sensations will carry that role into the future. My name is Stephon Marbury and I'm a rookie and I play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. When I got drafted, I was happy just to begin drafting. That was just like the happiest day of my life. I knew how hard I had to work to get there. I knew that since I was small, I've been saying I want to go to the NBA. Sometimes I just be like, man, I, I still don't believe it. But I mean, it's just as real as it comes. Being the first player, you know, chosen, coming in, you know, it's been a lot of expectations. You know, I just try to go out and play every game like it's my last. And uh, you know, I feel as long as I keep doing that, I could be successful. Hangs and hammers home! From the arc, down the lane, to the rack, play up The kid has come up big! Stephon Marbury! Watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. I want to be the type of guy, take over when necessary to take over. Always wanted to take the big shot. That's my goal, to, to become a complete all-around player as a point guard. Oh, Stephon! Man, oh man, how about this one? Swings it to Marbury, fakes out Howard, drives from the wing, down the lane, to the hole! Marbury leaving it off the glass! Stefan grew up in New York City, following in the footsteps of other great point guards like Bob Cousy, Nate Archibald, and Lenny Wilkins. At age 19, Marbury arrived in the NBA with Minnesota, a long way from the Brooklyn playgrounds where he first learned the game. It's not Coney Island, but it's home. And Stefan had little time to adjust as the young rookie was instantly thrust into a leadership role. When Stefan came out, he came in as a point guard. We gave him the ball from day one. We told him, you're going to be our point guard. He has the ball in his hands 80 85 percent of the time. So his responsibility is not how he plays, but how the other four guys play. Coach, if we score, we're going the same thing. We're a team that's young, and uh, he's got a lot of responsibility as a starting point guard because when we win, uh, it's because he's getting us in our offense. He's distributing the ball, and when he plays well, uh, we got a great chance of winning. Marbury through the circle, down the lane, to the rack, and the layup is in! Bumping into Ellis, bumping into the dice. Oh, my, what a play! Allen Iverson's road to the NBA led to Philadelphia, where he was well aware of the 76ers tradition. I'm playing in Philadelphia, where they had Maurice Cheeks as a point guard. And, you know, there were some big shoes to fill. The guy has heart, he has flair, he has uh, speed, he has anything you want in a player. Iverson. Oh, what a oh, pass! Yeah. What a play! Iverson has Jordan, the crowd is into it, Allen shakes free, gets two! That's the kind of point I want to be, point guard that does it all. Oh my, take that! Iverson, uh, you don't know which way he's going to go. Forget about it. Iverson for two! Or what he's going to do. Iverson! Well, with Steph Vaughn, I mean, he looks like he's been in the league a lot longer than just one year. He understands the game, and uh, with those guys, uh, it makes me feel old. And when the league's hottest young point guards meet head-on, the results can be explosive. Here they come, Marbury, Iverson, no, who, yes! Iverson and Marbury, right away, the crossover is shown, and Allen has his way. Marbury, stutters to baseline drive, reverse, yes! Iverson has Marbury, crosses over, strong to the goal for two! Taking charge in Minnesota, Marbury helped lead the rejuvenated Timberwolves into the playoffs in just his rookie season. 
while Iverson emerged as one of the league's most exciting players and was named the NBA Rookie of the Year. And as their careers progress, these two rising stars will bring a fresh spirit to the league as they continue to thrill NBA fans for many years to come. We are the future and we are the kids that are going to go out and play hard every night and we're going to continue that because we love the game. While these two guards have a budding rivalry, two other young players share a common bond. Those two men really have ESP on the basketball floor. Behind the back to Howard for two. Put that on your highlight reel and show it. Ahead to Howard. Oh, yeah. Guys need to take advantage of having a partner on the team. Two is better than one. Two is definitely better than one. Howard. To Weber. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they've done that a time or two. They are friends and teammates. But the link between Chris Webber and Juwan Howard began long before they arrived in the NBA. At the University of Michigan, they joined forces on one of the most heralded teams in college basketball, known as the Fab Five. But they would lose two straight national championship games, and along the way, Webber would have to endure a personal nightmare. He called a timeout, Michigan doesn't yes. have any. So it'll be a technical foul, North Carolina shooting and the ball. Fab Five comes up short again. There you have it. North Carolina is the 1993 national champion. With that bitter defeat, Weber's college career was over. But his journey took another strange twist just minutes after he became the NBA's top draft pick. Orlando has traded the draft rights to Chris Weber. Once I got traded and I realized it was a business it's right away, you know, Orlando didn't want me. I just set my sights here on Oakland and wanted to uh, become the best player I could for Golden State. Putting the draft day disappointment behind him, Chris enjoyed a spectacular rookie season. Straight down to Weber, he turns, looking behind the back, and the step of the foul! What a play by Weber! Even though Weber had earned recognition as the NBA's top rookie, his year with Golden State was also filled with controversy and frustration. Early in his second season, he was traded to Washington, where he would be reunited with Juwan. We were like family members, you know, we've been through a lot together on a college level, and then to come here and play at the NBA level together, you know, that's a dream come true, because we never ever thought that would happen. Now, college was such a wild ride that I never thought I'd be lucky enough to experience a piece of it again. But just when it seemed that he was getting a fresh start, Chris would again find himself falling on hard times. Oakland flops down. Weber goes down and loses the ball. He's hurt. Chris Weber is hurt. Maybe his left shoulder. And that'll probably be it for the season. Ironically, however, Weber's misfortune would give Howard a chance to flourish and he would now step forward to carry the team's offensive load. He has become the undisputed floor leader of this team. Howard hands off to Chapman. Chapman the shovel left side of Howard, puts the floor, drives the lane, stops it down over Morning. Despite the emergence of Howard, Washington couldn't seem to shake its losing ways. I mean, what else is the guy supposed to do for you? He just needs some help. That help came in the form of Weber, finally healthy again after two injury-plagued seasons. Let's go, go! Let's go! Let's go! And Chris and Juwan had not missed a beat. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Give and go, Strickland Howard lobs to Weber. Beautiful play, those two connect again. You know, some people ask me, like, how you do that? You know, what type of communication do you guys have out there? Well, I say all I do is give him a look. He gives me a look, and the ball is up in the air. <laughs> That's what they love to see here, those two connecting. It's like I know where he is on the court at all times. Playing with him is like um, being a psychic, reading, reading his mind. They were not only blending their talents, they had also become the team's co-captains. And they would combine to lead a dramatic turnaround in Washington. The drive. And then Weber jumps it to Howard, spinning on the baseline. That one's good. You want Howard for two. This looks like a team to be reckoned with maybe during the playoffs. In their first playoff appearance in nine years, Washington faced the NBA champion Bulls. 
though they would lose in three close games, they had made their mark as a team on the rise. They're growing. I mean, they're starting to show their baby steps of trying to get to the next level. And, you know, you can only tell about players like that that they're going to have a great future ahead of them. <laughs> Being around someone who is just like you, someone not only you can play with on the court, but you can actually talk to about your game. I don't know if that's destiny, but I'm glad that I have that. At the 1997 All-Star Weekend in Cleveland, the NBA honored its 50 greatest players of all time. Among them were some of the most innovative showmen the game had ever seen. Julius roaring to the basket, came up in Walton's face. Jordan. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan. But that weekend not only showcased what the league has become, it also provided a glimpse into its future. slam dunk champion. Kobe Bryant had risen to national prominence as a high school superstar in Philadelphia. And he continued to make headlines when he bypassed college and went right into the NBA draft at the age of 17. A coming out party for the high school kid. When I made my decision, I was 100% sure this is what I wanted to do. Get a chance to come to the NBA, play against the top competition in the world. The son of former NBA player Joe Bryant, Kobe, was well prepared for the challenge that lay ahead. My father always told me growing up that the only pressure an individual should feel is the pressure that he or she puts on himself. And it seemed that his game was tailor-made for the Lakers. Did you see the run by the kid? Did you see the finish by the kid? Bryant's flair revived memories of the Showtime Lakers who had thrilled L.A. fans in the 80s. And while cast in the image of those Laker teams, Kobe added his own 90s twist. Here comes Bryant. 360 turn. Slam. Dunk. Kobe giving the people what they came to see, that's for sure. We call him Showboat. So, you know, he has that flair. Uh, he likes to get an open court and definitely high rise. With a drive change of direction by Bryant. Slam. Dunk. Woo! It's highlight time for Kobe Bryant. I think that's what the fans came to see. And you talk about elevation. Chick, he went up to the rafters before he decided to put somebody on a poster. I hope that you see me as a kid who's living up his dream and is having a good time doing it. <laughs> well, he's playing all world <laughs> right now. There's a steal. There we go. Here comes Kobe. Slam dunk. This kid is going to be something. Live on the Bryant. Slam dunk. Oh, 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 Kobe. He's going to be a Laker for a long time, and uh, the fans love him, and he loves it out here, so it's a good combination. Dribble right, Kobe. Underneath Kobe. Spin it up and in, Kobe. Oh, Kobe, you want to you want highlight film again tonight? Does he enjoy playing or what? 360 turn in the air and spin it in. Magnificent. There's a lot of pride, you know, a lot of Laker tradition, and, uh, and that makes you want to work that much harder to keep the tradition and keep that pride going in a positive direction. And in the years ahead, Kobe will try to add some new chapters to one of the NBA's most storied franchises. But while the Lakers have a long and proud history, the Toronto Raptors were starting from scratch at the 95 draft. The expansion team was making its first pick, and fans were hoping it would be College Player of the Year, Ed O'Bannon. 21,000 in the house here at Sky Dome. They are waiting for the Toronto Raptors' first choice. But the Raptors selection would take everyone by surprise. With the seventh pick in the 1995 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select Damon Stoudemire from the University of Arizona. Though he was not the people's choice, Damon had been handpicked by general manager Isaiah Thomas, who saw some of himself in Stoudemire. I'm just happy that Toronto and Isaiah Thomas gave me this opportunity, and I'm going to try to make the most of it. 
And he would immediately set out to prove that Isaiah had made the right choice. Here's a young man that has no fear. And in fact, Isaiah Thomas told him after he drafted him, he says, that's the way I want you to play. I think he was very well-rounded in terms of his education in basketball and also his education about who he was going to grow up to be. And I think the Toronto situation for him was a perfect fit. Stoudemire then behind the back, Spence, putting on a show. Oh, <laughs> David Stoudemire, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seizing the reins as leader of the Raptors, the lightning quick Stoudemire became one of the top point guards in the league. And with his selection as NBA Rookie of the Year, he had silenced any remaining skeptics. The war means a lot to me. I don't think a lot of people thought I could do it. Never take this young man for granted because you're not going to see too many guys like this come along. David Stoudemire, pound for pound, the strongest guy in the league. A guy my size, you got to work extra hard because there are going to be a lot of doubters. You know, there are a lot of doubters when I came in the league, and there still might be a lot of doubters now. Push! That's a point guard in the NBA, baby! And he'd force the rest of the league to sit up and take notice. That boy Stoudemire, he's really excited. I saw somebody that you can get a bag of popcorn, sit there and watch and go, ooh. Stoudemire, oh, oh, my goodness, no! It's not one point guard in the league that wants to see Damien Stoudemire coming. Oh, what a move by Stoudemire. Stoudemire is probably one of the quickest with the ball. You're at his mercy and you just hope that he's having a bad day. One play that stands out in my mind is uh, we played Chicago and I made Ron Harper fall. Crossed him over, stepped back, kind of looked at him for a second, <laughs> hit the jumper. I'm going to fake you right <laughs> out of your shoes. <laughs> Come on, Walt, Damon, get some shots up, we get out of here. Coach Darrell Walker, a former point guard himself, had come to appreciate Damon. Unbelievable! Damon is a pro, is pro, and one thing I like about him, he's from the old school. He just plays the game and goes home. Got to get into it earlier. Can be. Yeah. What I try to do is pick his brain a lot and see what he's thinking and see if we're thinking on the same page. What do you think the mismatches are? Well, in today? Yeah, I'm just asking you because I was still we thinking the same way. I think, um, well, the point, of course. Yeah. I, but, <laughs> I, I, that's obvious. I'm going to have to get this tattoo redone. It's going to be so wide. Mighty Mouse was always somebody who came to save the day. You know, when everything was down, he would come in and save the day, and that's kind of his attitude. He's got to put it up. Fires. Got it! Oh, my! He has a chance to be something really, really special in this league. I hope when he's done that y'all talk about he and I in the same breath. Uh, still. <laughs> Like Stoudemire, Vin Baker found himself facing many doubters as he entered the NBA. While most of the league's stars had played in the spotlight of a major college, Baker was an exception. He had attended the University of Hartford, a school not known for its basketball program. I think it helped me coming from a small school um, like the University of Hartford. I think, you know, when I came into the league, I felt that I had a lot, a lot of things to accomplish and a lot of people um, to show that I belong. And he would emphatically put any doubts to rest. Still fighting for a great effort by Ben Baker. And now he takes it to the hole. He is going to be some kind of player. He already is. Sherman Douglas lobs it to Baker. Wow, what a play. He's versatile. He's mobile. He is agile. He's everything. Clock at seven. Baker looking to the tie. The turnaround. Count it! A rather unknown out of college at Hartford, but he's become a well-known player here in the NBA. Fueling Vin's success is the love of the game that has driven him ever since childhood. You come out here and just seriously go up and down this court, just playing by myself, just making moves and playing by myself all night. Growing up in New England, he patterned himself after one of the NBA's preeminent big men. When I was young, I looked at Kevin McHale because Kevin worked on his moves and got most of his baskets from great moves. It seemed like when he got people on that block, they were just at his mercy. 
Mikhail, the master of the low post, rendered many opponents helpless, and his style made a lasting impression on Baker. I'm going down here. Come on. Come on. Well, he's got some of the best down low moves, and the Bulls cannot stop him. Now, I'm very impressed with him. Vinny just keeps getting better and better, and uh, you know, he's really, I think he's one of the best power forwards in our league today. Oh, nice move. That's oh. Mikhail last. Like Kevin, I think I can get inside, and, and because I'm 6'11 and maybe smaller than some of the guys I play against, I'm able to maneuver inside and get closer to the basket and just try to use my foot quickness the best way I can. Oh, what a play by Baker. He faked Jack right out of his shoes. He's got the greatest moves of all time at the power forward position, but give me about three or four more years, and I, I may feel a little bit more confident. But it's not only in the low post where Baker displays his remarkable talent. I love taking the ball off the rim and being able to push it. You know, it's, it's kind of like that, that thing that everybody wants to do. Every small guy wants to be a big fella, and every big fella wants to be a small guy. Ben with the dribble on the right side, takes it all the way, and jams it! There's different kinds of fast breaks. One of them is let your big man go all the way, coast to coast. So I love taking the ball off the rim and having a chance to create something or do something that, you know, most people don't ordinarily think guys 6'11 or 7 feet can do. Once obscure, Baker had now emerged as a marquee performer for the Milwaukee Bucks. He was named an all-star in three of his first four seasons. But then his career would take an unexpected turn when he was traded to the Seattle Sonics. I've been on a team where we talked about making the playoffs to a team that's talking about winning the West, so it's a whole different feeling for me, and um, I'm excited about it. And with players like Ben Baker on the rise, the league has ushered in an exciting new era. As the NBA stands on the threshold of a new millennium, dynamic young stars are making their presence felt all over the league, and on any given night. Any one of them is capable of doing something spectacular. Quick dice drive by Oster Tank and slam it home with a right hand. Daniels now going to be in a foot race with Bimbo. Goes up and lays it over the rim. What an absolute explosion by Kittles. Here comes up to Raheem. All the way they gave him the lead. Camby, leading the break. Takes it up and jams it down. There is the athleticism. Tracy McGrady can bring to the table. players who, by their greatness, have transformed the game. But their ultimate legacies may be their constant drive for excellence and their insatiable desire to win. And perhaps the young player of today who best embodies the spirit of his predecessors is Grant Hill of the Detroit Pistons. I wanted to come in and assert myself from the start. I didn't want to ease into it. I wanted to jump into it head first. Hill. Oh. Amazing! Grant seemed to exude the confidence not found in most young players. Baby, what a play by Grant Hill! I feel as if when, when I'm out there on the court that I can do whatever I want to do. Grant Hill to the rim! Scott to the rim! Whoever I'm going against is not going to stop me. Grant Hill bouncing head to Lindsay. Two on one against Hornacek. 
person in this top is myself. In comes a, a fresh young man, Grant Hill, who brought some of that flair to the game. Hill is the one who can electrify and who creates that participation. Uh, you know, that's the ball. Here comes Grant. Michael picks up foul line. Grant gets by him. Finger roll over Jordan. Fans are electrified by creativity. And Grant Hill certainly has those credentials. Grant would dominate a sensational first season with his selection as Rookie of the Year. But despite his personal success, the Pistons struggled. Winning the Rookie of the Year was, was a great honor, but it was tough, you know, dealing with losing. People say you you, know, you adjust to losing, you become comfortable with it. I, I, I can never adjust to losing. And that fierce competitive drive was nurtured in Grant's childhood. The son of Dallas Cowboys running back Calvin Hill. He would learn some early lessons. I want to check your ball. I remember my father, a professional athlete, and I used to say he his game face on from, I don't know, from training camp until the end of the season. And, uh, he was so intense and so focused that it was almost scary. When Calvin played, Grant was very young, but I think that later in life he must have remembered some of the things that he saw when he was a little boy. But it was not only his father who he looked to for inspiration. My mom worked so hard. Uh, she kept long hours at work, but then when she came home, she worked hard. And she said, Grant, go into a meeting. I want to cover all areas. I want to be prepared for anything. And it's just like in basketball. And as his career began to take off, he would incorporate the values instilled in him by his parents. At Duke University, he led the Blue Devils to three Final Fours and two national championships. The destiny has won it. College basketball has a repeat champion. But one of the beautiful things about Grant is that he always recognized that he wanted to be a part of a, of a great team. And that one person wasn't going to make that team. And Grant had carried that firm belief in teamwork at the low level, where he continued to evolve as the floor leader of the Pistons. Get up, get up, beat! Step up, beat, step up! Bill in the lane. But what ultimately sets Grant Hill apart is not just his versatility or his care for the spectacular. A lot of great players come in for the first three or four years. You know, they pick up huge numbers. And then over the fifth year, they start winning. Uh, I think he realizes that winning is important right now. They get it to Hill. Bill Tiger, Tiger. His focus is to win. You know, he doesn't go out and try to get 40 at night, and uh, he just tries to help us win games, and, and that's what makes him special. Grant is a guy you build your team around because he knows what he has to do to win the game for his team. And I love guys who can raise the level of other players around him. That's why we're in this: is to win. Either you win or you lose, and, and, and no one likes to lose. Or I like to associate myself. With likes to lose. You know, I like to associate myself with winners. Uh, you know, I, I know in time we will be winning a championship or two or three. Antoine Walker, what a move. Oh, this kid. What a great star he's going to be. I'm talking about him being a star.
Raptor. This kid is taking some serious moves. What a crossover move by Penny Hardaway. Highlight real material by number one. Jackson.